Are you tired of typing in really long Docker and Docker Compose commands? You actually do not need to. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. What's up Geek Army, Anand here once again. Many people have sent me messages on bash aliases and how I use them. I use them to simplify my Docker and Docker Compose management. Let's go step by step and see how you can implement what I have been using for many years. And of course, this is not the only way to do it. If you have a better way to do it, leave a comment below. Let me know how you do it and also share with the rest of the community. If you have been following my videos, we have been going through one step at a time. We started with implementing Docker in a Proxmox LXE or a Ubuntu server. Then I mounted some remote folders. In my last video, I showed you how to get started with the ultimate Docker media server. And in that video, we were typing in a lot of lengthy commands. And in this video, we're going to see how to simplify those. So we're going in a sequence here. And if you really like my approach and you really are interested in what's about to come, please like, subscribe. And more importantly, if you really like my work, the GitHub and my guides, everything, check out some of the membership options I have on my website. It would really help me out as I am just getting started on YouTube and I can't really monetize anything yet. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start off as we do all the time on my Proxmox LXE open to server right here called UDMS, Ultimate Docker Media Server. And I already SSH in as I have done in all of my previous videos. So here I am right now. So if I do sudo docker ps and type in my password right here, you're gonna see all the containers that we installed as a part of my previous video, which was on getting started with the ultimate docker media server. Let's say here I want to restart Jellyfin. How do I do that? I need to know where the Docker Compose file is. And if you have been following my videos, it should be inside the Docker folder. So let's go inside the doc CD Docker and we're going to see the Docker Compose file right here. So how do I restart Jellyfin? Let's do sudo docker compose dash f and docker docker file and restart Jellyfin. And that's how you restart Jellyfin. Now, let's say I want to check the logs in real time for the Jellyfin container. We do the same thing sudo docker compose dash f and the docker file. And then we're going to do logs instead now. And then tf and tail equal to 50. So, what this is going to do is show in real time the last 50 lines of the log file. So if I do that now, it's showing me the logs in real time. I think you get the point. Each command is lengthy and I don't like to do it this way. I use bash aliases to simplify running Docker and Docker Compose commands. Let's do one more example. Let's say I want to recreate the Jellyfin container. So I would do the exact same thing, but I'm going to go up right here, delete all of this stuff. Instead, now I'm going to say up the and Jellyfin and force recreate. Okay. And there you go. That's how you recreate a container. Now, of course, these are Docker Compose commands. You can essentially do similar things with Docker commands as well. Let's say I want to see the logs for the Jellyfin container using Docker inserts. So I would do sudo docker logs Jellyfin. This is going to show me the last few lines of the Jellyfin containers log. And I could also do exactly the same as what I did with the Docker Compose command. So tf dash dash hail the last let's say this time 110 lines so and it's going to do the same thing now it's going to wait and as and when new events happen those logs will start to show up now let's see how to simplify this using bash aliases so if you are familiar with my github repository which is right here i have many wonderful things in my github repository here everything that I have accumulated and fine-tuned over a period of six to seven years right now. So if you go into shared folder right there and I have bash aliases right there. So you don't really need to start from scratch. So let's let's copy this over 
copy all of it and we're gonna head over to our ultimate docker media server command line here or in your case you're open to server or debian server wherever it is let's go over to the home folder so i am in my home folder as you can see if i do ls minus al i have these things show up now bash aliases go into a file called bash aliases you don't see a file here that's called bash aliases so let's create one so nano dot bash aliases don't don't forget the bash or do not forget the dot in the front that is going to make the file a hidden file and that's how it's referenced inside the dot bash rc file that you see on the screen right here so we're going to name this dot bash aliases as you see on the screen so we go in here and we're gonna paste everything that I just copied over well that's not what I copied over so let's head back here and we're gonna paste all of that right there so we copy pasted everything from my github repository now of course you feel free to go through the whole list edit whatever you need to edit and all of that stuff and maybe you're just interested in the docker commands so in that case you can remove everything else that's down there below this point one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna comment out this line right there because i don't think you need it i have many different machines and i try to share the same file among different machines and depending on which machine this file loads up some of the variables change so this is why i have that at the top so you can comment that out right now so let's save this file right now and you have to reload your bash environment so you do that with this command dot i believe it's this is how you do it i think let's see yeah that's how you do it now notice what happened my prompt changed from anand at udms to this fancy looking thing right there because in my batch aliases i also have an alias that sets the prompt using this command right here so it just sort of beautifies the whole thing makes it look nicer fancier whatever you want to call it so it looks like that right now obviously you don't like it you can change it you're welcome to also change the colors do whatever you want with it now that we've done this let's redo the same commands that we ran previously those commands that were lengthy and see how easy it is to manage everything so let's restart jellyfin container if you remember we did that really long command so if right now it changes to dc restart jellyfin why dc docker compost so as you can imagine there are some commands that are docker based and some commands that are docker compost based so those that are docker compost commands will start with dc and those that are docker commands will start with the d so let's and that's it voila that was so simple now, if you want to recreate, same deal, DC. Well, I shortened it a little bit, so it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get used to it. You could do DC recreate. I just say DC rec, jellyfin. So feel free to customize the bash aliases file to however you like it. So that's it, that was so simple. What if I want to bring the whole thing down? Obviously, you will have to have Typed in docker compost dash f the pass to the file and then down to bring the whole thing down with my dash aliases all i do is dc down and everything stops and the same way if i want to start my whole st stack back up i say dc up and it comes back up there are a lot more really cool stuff that i have in here let's start the stack up right now dc up as we said and everything will start right back up i'll show you some of the cool text now what we saw until now are all docker compost commands there are several more docker commands as well so i'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see there are many different docker compost commands here so docker stop docker stop all which will stop all containers you can do remove a container you can prune unused volumes you can prune unused data you can prune unused images that have been pulled from the docker repository you can just blow off the whole thing with this docker de erase command docker prune 
does deletes all of the things that you saw right up here the the volume this this image and the images so it's basically a nice command to run once in a while to get rid of any unused images unused volumes unused data all of that stuff and then another one really nice one is the exact which is basically docker exact when you want to get into the command line of a container running container you use this command right here to get into the container now I just have to do the exact. Let's try it out and in fact. So if I go in here, I know all of these commands of all of these containers are running right now. So let's do the exact jelly fan then bash. So now I'm at the command line of the jelly fan container. So it's it's that easy. Now let's keep moving. I have I really have one at least cool thing to show you. So Next, if I want to see all the running containers, I could do sudo docker ps rdts and that shows everything that is running right now or even those that have exited recently. Now, if I want to see how much all of my docker uh, files or images that have been pulled from the repository take up, I can do ddf and this is going to show me the images that have been pulled from the docker repository are about 1.48 gigabytes and you know you see a few other things right there so then uh, maybe one more thing if you really want to see the ip addresses of all the different containers that you have running the ips and there you go it gives you a list of all the running containers what ips that they are available at some of them you see they are they have two different ips and if you go back to my previous video on how to set up the ultimate Docker media server or getting started with it. There were some containers, especially Dozel and Homepage that were attached to two different networks. And those obviously have two different IP addresses as you can see. And one more really nice thing, if you remember in my previous guide, we were always checking to see if the ports were free or not. And that required a really fancy command that looks somewhat like this you don't have to remember all of that stuff i have an alias for that so all i have to do is type in ports used and that's going to spit out a list of all the ports that are in use isn't that awesome so that was it i hope you got to see how use bash aliases to simplify at least the docker and docker compost management side of things if you scroll through my bash aliases you're going to see a lot more commands right here just to simplify things and if you're a, if you have gotten to crowdsec i use aliases to manage crowdsec as well there are several more stuff in here like for creating tar backups there are navigational backups as well so for example if i am if i am right here so i am in slash home slash panel if i want to go two levels down all i have to do is type in two dots and i'm back if i want to go let I'll go back to and right there and if I type in three dots I would go back all the way down to root folder as you can see here so feel free to go through there are many many different things in here obviously if there are some bash aliases that you really like and have simplified your life or if you find an error or a better way to do something let me know in the comments below it would help me out as well and also the community otherwise I really hope this give you a, a nice tip that makes management of your home lab a little bit simpler if you did like subscribe and watch out for more videos that will come up hit that notification bell that's it for today go geek army